In this video, we're going to look at how we can apply what we've learned about the horse's digestive system to what we feed and how we feed our horses. As we've learned, horses have unique digestive systems. Their digestive systems have been adapted to meet the needs of a grazing animal that spends large portions of their day roaming for food. In fact, horses in the wild graze for about 16 to 20 hours each day while traveling long distances for foraging areas and shelter. They spend their time eating small meals frequently, taking short naps, taking their turn looking for predators, socializing with the herd, and learning from other horses. Even domestic horses, while pastured, will spend the majority of their time moving around while grazing. Around 75% of the day and 50% of the night will be spent eating. We're going to use this knowledge and the knowledge of the horse's digestive system that we've learned about in parts one and two of this video series to develop a list of key take-home messages to remember when it comes to feeding horses. One of the most important messages to remember when it comes to horses is to always put forage first. Forage is important for many different reasons for horses. These reasons include Chew time. Horses need chew time for their health and for their welfare. They have an innate need to chew and the saliva that they produce while they chew is important to lubricate and buffer the digestive tract. Remember that horses generally chew more when receiving forage diets compared to pelleted diets. Forage is also important when it comes to the horse's stomach. Remember that the horse's stomach has two regions, a lower region that is constantly producing acid and an upper region where no acid is produced that does not have a protective mucus layer. Forage is more likely to float and help protect the upper region from acid splashing up. Forage also keeps our friends, the microbes that live in your horse's hindgut, happy and healthy. The microbes in the hindgut need the fiber from forage in order to survive. They produce about 75% of the calories your horse needs and help warm the horse when it's cold out, so we want to keep them happy. Remember to also provide free access to clean water, as lots of water is needed to keep forage moving through the digestive system. It's also important to consider how we feed. Remember that horses are grazers, and evolve to eat small amounts of food frequently throughout the day and night. Although it can often be easier and more convenient to meal feed our horses, it's better to try to mimic this natural feeding behavior as close as we can. If you remember back to the first part of our video presentation, we learned that horses have a very small stomach relative to their body size. This small stomach is meant to process small amounts of feed often throughout the day and night. On top of this, horses continuously secrete stomach acid and bile into their digestive system. So it's very important that we always try to keep small amounts of food moving through the system. Another important point to remember for how we feed is to make any feed changes very gradually. The microbes in your horse's hindgut need time to adjust to any feed changes. To give you an example of this, think of if you woke up every morning and ate a bowl of oatmeal or a whole wheat muffin or something that contained a lot of fiber, and you did this for a month straight. Now imagine that one of those mornings you got up and instead decided to eat incredible huge bowl full of jelly beans. I'm sure you can appreciate that you might get a bit of a tummy ache after this. Think about this when it comes to your horse's hindgut microbes. They get used to eating one thing and they don't like a sudden change. The making feed changes slowly rule goes for all feeds including hay. 
Although they can look similar, the nutrients in hay can actually change very drastically from one lot to the next, and this is true even off the same field from year to year. An important note here is to always be aware of the amount of non-structural carbohydrates that the horse is receiving. You will recall how we talked about in part two that non-structural carbohydrates, like simple sugars, fructans, and starch, can slip to, through to the hindgut if the horse eats more than can be digested and absorbed in their foregut. Horses need time to adjust to any increases in the amount of non-structural carbohydrates that they're receiving, which is why it's important to gradually increase concentrate feeds and gradually introduce horses to rapidly growing pastures like spring pasture. It's also important to not only slowly introduce non-structural carbohydrates, but also to be aware of the total amount that the horse is receiving. Too many non-structural carbohydrates in the diet can increase the risk of problems like colic and laminitis. If the horse needs additional calories, consider adding more digestible fiber or fat as alternative energy sources. Finally, always make sure that feed is safe and clean before it goes in the horse. Remember that horses cannot vomit, so we need to make sure that the feed is safe and clean before it enters the digestive tract. So, that brings us to the end of our journey. Now that we've gone through everything, let's revisit the question that we posed in the first video. Is the horse's digestive tract an accident waiting to happen? Or is it actually nature's great design? We believe that the horse's digestive tract is amazingly well-developed for the life that nature intended. When humans domesticated the horse, their natural way of life changed completely. However, we can still control what those changes look like, so let's make sure that it's not our choices that are the problem.